This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, get on that boat, because we're going to be traveling down with the oars going down the stream, looking at the jungle, seeing animals, we're trying to race to the end, and we're also going to be in some villages. Today we're looking at Carcassonne Amazonas. This is the latest in the Carcassonne spin-off series called Around the World. I'm going to show you how this game is played, how it differs from the original Carcassonne, and the others that have come out in this series, and I'll see you on the other side. Let's take a look. Now the starting tile on this version of Carcassonne is this is huge one piece of board. It's double sided, this one's for four or five players, other side's for two or three, and you put the starting boats in this spot here. Now just like typical Carcassonne, there's going to be piles of tiles that you're going to take up, and on your turn you're simply going to pick a tile up, you're going to look at it, and you're going to place it somewhere. And just like the normal Carcassonne, there's going to be placement rules. Now if you see these grid lines here, in the ocean. This is to show you that there's essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square tiles of the normal size here. Now at the beginning of the game you can only you can build on everything around here except going out the other side of the river. Now normal placement Carcassonne rules uh, match here. So this is a jungle edge so I have to put it so that there's a complete jungle edge here. I could not do this because this is a village and that's a jungle. I could do this though because that's a jungle Sorry, this is a jungle and this is the village that matches. I could not do this. So typical Carcassonne rules apply. Now, when I place a tile, just like the normal Carcassonne, if I was the red player here, I could place it in the village. This is the equivalent of a city in the normal Carcassonne. I'll get to fruits later. Or if I didn't want to do that, I could place a hut. Everybody is given two huts at the beginning. This will never come off the board and score at the end of the game. This is similar to the farmer's scoring in the regular Carcassonne. And if I did not want to place either a meeple or a hut, I can instead move my boat up one because it is a race. I'll tell you how that works in just a moment. Now just to show you what the scoreboard looks like in this version, it's beautiful and it does fit the theme. Also note that when you put your one worker here, you're only left with four meeples and two huts. And again, the huts always stay on the board, but you only have four meeples, so you're going to be putting them on and taking them off more rapidly in this than the normal version. So in addition to the jungles and the villages, we also have the little tributaries or rivers. And again, this river coming off has to be there like that. And so here, this let's just say the yellow player, they could put it here in the village, but let's say they decide to go here on the river. Now let's say in a future's turn for yellow, they place this tile like this. Now in this case, this actually stops the river, it closes it. So they would be able to pull this meeple off and score almost exactly like roads in the original Carcassonne. It'd be one point per tile, so one, two, three, plus one point for every fruit, that's the fruit coming in there. So they'd get four points, they get to pull us back. But if they place this tile a different way, like this, and their meeple was there, again, it's one, two, three tiles plus that, it still gets the four points, but because there's a boat icon here, they get to move their boat up one on the Amazon. And so now they would be tied with red. Let's say later on the blue player plays this. It matches the tile. It actually it's one of those things where it opens a village and it closes it all at the same time. He'd be able to take this guy back. And this, just like the castles in normal clock or so, two points each. So it'd be two, four. This player would get four points and pull their meeple back. So those are the three different major types. Villages, just like cities. Uh, the rivers, just like roads, and the jungles, just like the farms in the normal version. Now here's where things get really different. Let's say the next player draws this tile, and it's one of these tiles. This is an Amazon tile. It has a big Amazon river in it. They can place it either way that they like, assuming that it, it, it fits where they're putting it. Like do it either way like this or like this. Now let's say they place this here. What they will do is they'll, they'll be scoring here. Now they can still place their meeple on this. They can never place it in the Amazon, but they can place it on you know, the river or a hut in the village here. But this is going to score. Whoever's furthest down the river is going to score all the alligators and piranhas. In this case, there's a total of two. This player would get to move up two on the score track. Whoever's in second place or tied for second, so these two would get just however many piranhas there are. That's just one. And anybody else gets nothing, but they all get to move up one. So they'll get up and you know, that sort of help them there. Now there are some other tiles of the Amazon that we'll go into more detail. So let's say the next tile someone draws is one of these. Now notice that this has an eye on it. When it does, that means you got to stop immediately 
and you need to place another tile. There's actually four of these double tiles. You get to look at and select which one of these, and this is important of the selection because we're gonna do some scoring. For instance, if this was the yellow player placing this, they're in the lead, they're gonna to wanna to find the one that's gonna score them the most points and everybody else the least points, which will be this. And again, this can either be placed like this, or it could be placed like this, depending on how they want. And then they could still place a player, a meeple, on one of the sections of the, this last tile that they placed. Now that this yellow plays in the middle, in the first place, they'll get one, two, three, four, five points right up on the scoreboard. Second place is tied for just one. So that was huge. If it wasn't the yellow player that placed, maybe they would want to place it like this. Because... Now the first player is only going to get two, and every, the second player is going to get three. And so there's only four of these tiles, and so three of them will get used each game, so one will not get used. And that's sort of how the race works down the Amazon. Now as the Amazon grows, that means everything where you can place grows. Remember, you can place anywhere around except at the end of the river. So now you're able to... Uh, you know, work around here or work uh, developing the other areas that have been developed. Now you'll continue doing this until the last tile is taken and then you will do the final scoring. Just like roads, each guy still on a, um, a tributary will get one point for a tile. So it's like one, two, and three for the fruit. So as if, if you normally had closed it and scored it. Non-closed villages are just like the non-closed cities. In the regular, you only get one point instead of two each. So this would just be one point for every tile that this was a village that was not closed. And then the huts. This is similar to that farmer scoring, but much easier to see. Wherever the hut is, you'll get one point for each animal. So we have one, two, three, four. In this case, this hut would get four points. You do that for every other piece on the board that has not yet been finished of every player. And then whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, I've been a big fan of all of the Carcassonne games. They're just amazing, relaxing games that are great gateway games to help other people get into this hobby, but they're still enjoyable with all the expansions and such. Now, a few years ago, they started coming out with this series of the Around the World. They had the South Seas, they had Gold Rush, and now we have Amazonas. Now, what do I think about this one first? Uh, I really like it. It's awesome. I love the theme. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, when you lays out there and you see it go around the, the table and how, the, how it turns around, it just it looks stunning on the table. And the gameplay is great. Um, I've got to say, for, let's first talk about how this plays versus the original Carcassonne. Uh, this, out of all of the newest ones that have come out, this is the one that plays most similarly to the original Carcassonne. I mean, literally, the, 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 the streets are now the rivers. The villages um, were what the cities were. Uh, and you have now the, the jungle, which were the farms. So it's very much the same, but that twist of the race and just those Amazon tiles, it is a big part of the game, but it's one element that's different. Uh, and that different element is amazing. But before I get there, let me just talk about the jungles and the huts. Uh, those huts are awesome because in the, the, the original Carcassonne, anytime I teach this game to anybody who's new, that, that doesn't play a lot of hobby games, the farms just trip them up so hard during playing that I never even play with the farms the first time we play. After we play, I show them how the farms would work if we had played with them, and then they usually want to play it again and we play with farms. But it's kind of a harder concept for new people to grasp. It always is the hardest thing to teach. But it's it's good this takes that and throws it out of the water uses the hut it's essentially the same thing but it's much more interesting because you can just place a hut and you can right away see oh any animals in this jungle is going to score me a point it's so easy to see and it just makes it so they don't stumble over it and it's just as useful and i really like it a lot so they've really streamlined that mechanism now the race aspect is awesome and it's really the key difference of this game and it's awesome because a lot of times you're placing things and you're like huh i want to put a guy here but i I, I'm really far behind or this guy's starting to catch up and I'm in first place. I'm not going to put something and I'm going to move up on the boat. Uh, and so there's these different decisions to make. And then if you're the one that gets one of those three special Amazon tiles and you get to choose which one, there's lots of strategy as depending on which place you're in as to which tile you're going to do. I mean, it's light strategy, don't get me wrong, but there's more thought going into it. And I like how as the river grows, then the tiles and where you can place grows. Where at the beginning, you're right around the edge and then you can start to slowly move as the river moves. And it just looks awesome on the table. So overall, I absolutely love this one. In fact, I like it even more than the original Carcassonne because I think it's as easy to teach, if not easier, and there's more going on with the race, and the huts are easier to teach. So I would actually even probably now play this for the first time with a new player and 
in, you know, I would play it with this one instead of the original Carcassonne, actually. Now, of course, the original Carcassonne, you could play it. I've got the big box where you can add in all the expansions, and it's so much more expandable. So if you like this idea of tile playing, and you like th this idea, yeah, you're going to want to get the original Carcassonne and many of the expansions anyway, but if you don't have any of them, this is a great one to get even just first to see if you like it, because the theme, I, I think the theme and looking on the table is a lot cooler. Now, how does this compare to the other ones? It's very different from the other ones, because this is the one that's the most similar to Carcassonne. So if you're looking for one of these around the world ones that is most similar to Carcassonne, but yet different, this is the one to get. Uh, if you want one that is the most sort of uh, combative and meanness and has sort of that more take that, more competitive type of things, then get the Gold Rush. If you want one that just feels nothing like any of them, but still feels like Carcassonne is more about resource management, then get South Seas. But overall, this one's fantastic. Let's induct it with a saxophone serenade to my gaming library. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.